keynote session on the topic strategies for achieving tax compliance and innovation keys to success for that i would like to call mr rajesh shukla head indirect tax coe tata motors mr rajesh is qualified cost accountant having more than 32 plus years of post qualification experience in finance and taxation with brilliant academic record and proven track record in the industry rajesh is the topper of amravati university in post graduation and rank holder of cma exam he was fifth merit in hsc exam conducted by nagpur board he is currently working with tata motors as senior general manager and leading center of excellence coe of indirect tax function of tata motors group he is responsible for the indirect taxation of all tata motor group entities operating in india and overseas in addition to his responsibility for tata motors he is member of apex committee of tata group tax forum i would like to call mr rajesh shukla on the dais to share his insights thank you mitali i hope i am audible yeah so once again warm welcome and good morning to all of you biswa has taken us on global level i'll bring you back okay in india we are all here a uh, tax managers we you know what is our role biswa has focus on business partnering but i think we have more important role as a basic is a uh, stewardship and what stewardship means to us is that one we have to definitely ensure the compliance and secondly we have to see that we are not taking our company in risk zone so risk mitigation so today's topic given to me is strategies for achieving tax compliance and innovation so if few years back he would have kept this topic people must have thought whether we need strategies to do compliance right because strategies are required for some big business decision acquisitions and business growth but now we are talking about strategies to do compliance and i will share my thoughts why the topic is very relevant and why strategies are required but let me ask first question to all of you what do you mean by compliance what is our when we say compliance what is the thought which comes into our mind anybody can share what do you mean by compliance all of us are tax managers here please come up so <laughs> best example of what compliance means to him and lot of things are happening in media i don't want to comment on that <laughs> any other view so people think compliance means filing return filing return in time filing return accurately and so and so forth so is it that compliance so i think compliance is supposed to be a very holistic word and uh, if we compare uh our life nowadays and like the company or the group for which i am working so we have so much to handle we have 150 registrations we have to file 450 plus returns every month we have to go through that we have uh, to take care of taking credit paying taxes so if we see the volumes and complexity in life of tax managers they are humongous and hence it is very very important to know that that compliance though it is basic it is not optional anybody think compliance optional here no thank you at least all of you agree with me that compliance is not optional so what happen if if suppose we miss on this basic and i said compliance can be define anything filing return on time accurately but beyond this i think we have to take right positions with the uh tax laws or whatever happening if we don't do that you can see the result right these names are well known for their ethical practices what they are supposed to do they are knowing but still they are in the problem and you can see the values which are there so if we miss on holistic approach on compliance we don't assess what we are doing it is not going to serve the purpose and 
we will be landing ourselves and our company into this trap. So I think all of us know that if we don't do this, what are the implications? So one is you have the financial instability, you have to get into a lot of cash outflow, litigation, your reputation as risk, your resources are getting consumed in all this. It is not that easy that you get today a notice and you reply and it is over, right? It is going to take years to conclude. We are just seven years in GST and I hope all of you know how many appeals are pending at which stages, how many notices are issued. So all this we can avoid if we take uh, right precautions. Just for your information, uh, the compliance focus of government is increasing day by day and how it is helping them. So if we compare the average collection of GST, we started in 2017, nine months, was only 7 lakh crore. In 2023-24, they have collected a 20 lakh plus crore. And if you calculate, the CAGR is 18.7%. So do you mean that GDP of India has grown this much? No. So GDP of India is between 6.5 to 7% during this period. So how they have got this? So they got because they forced our industry or the people to do compliance more rigorously and that is the result which they are getting. So compliance is important for country, compliance is important for government and compliance is important for us. Now, what are the basic steps which we need to be aware when we talk about we are compliant or we need to be compliant. And as a listed companies, we have to certify, our board has to certify that we have to, uh, we are compliant. So to sign that, we need a very, uh, I can say, a courage to say that I am compliant fully. We, we try, but somewhere uh, we know that it is very challenging. So what we have to do is we start with our basics. Basic is mapping your all transaction with the law in your system because I'm sure that nobody can do it in current world, any compliance manually. And with GST, we have been forced to go electronically because GST is entirely going on e-governance or uh, electronic uh, compliance. So we have to be careful whether our all transactions have we understood, the, like Bishwa said, understand the business first, then map those transactions and the processes with law and then in your system. Then, as I mentioned, we have to be very careful what are our positions which we have taken. And we have to continuously watch. It cannot be that I have taken today a position and I can survive with that. Because when GST got introduced, many things were not clear to government as well as to us as an industry. And then there are so many advanced rulings coming in, there are so many uh, court judgments are coming in, the government also is issuing a lot of clarification. So it gives us idea how the people are interpreting. So we have to test our positions, whether we have taken the right positions or not. And then if there is a need to change, we have to amend ourselves. <coughs> Accuracy and timelines, definitely there is no compromise on that. And as I mentioned, that to handle this kind of uh, volumes which big organizations are having, we have to have very efficient processes. What are the current challenges? I think all of us are aware that these frequent changes which I mentioned is one thing. As a, a matter of fact, if we see the GST notification, rate change notification, the amendments in a lot of uh, uh, sections or rules or any clarifications, Total 1,500 plus are issued only by CBIC. So if you calculate the average for last seven years, every two days, there is one change which we have to study and map it to our business and implement. So 
this is very very critical for us secondly now this it landscape of india government we don't know every day they be come up now this ims is coming right inward duty structure is going to be uh, sorry uh, input distributor service uh, in this is going to be mandatory from 1st april so all these changes are really going to impact us if we have to do a right compliance so we need to have uh, eye on all these critical issues which we are facing uh, i need not mention each and everything because all of us are dealing with this so uh, what are our uh, practices so as uh, i am uh, heading this function i'll just share what things we are doing so definitely uh, as i mention we have to be mindful of these changes see what positions we are taking we have created a technical committee within the organization so every 7 days we meet we study this if required we organize the awareness sessions with our business partners not only inside organization but vendor the dealers because the gst is one compliance which is not completely in your control earlier pre gst our compliance was independent whatever we do our filing return was a final thing now we are living interdependent world we are interconnected if one of my supply chain partner is not compliant definitely it is going to hit me so these are the uh, things which we should be mindful and we need to have uh, innovations in mind so what are the innovations so innovations can be on two parts innovation as a technology adoption definitely that is the most important thing but innovation in our thought process innovation in our business models going to government doing advocacy is also kind of innovation if we talk about the technology and i think the theme of this is where the experts meet innovators and many many of the uh, innovators are sitting here so as a group what we are doing is that we are adopting the technology or we are innovating continuously monitoring this piece uh, right from basic compliance so digitization of end to end process and i can give many examples one example which i can tell you about our organization is that itc digitization end to end what we have done is that in addition to the government api which mandates people to generate e invoice and upload and then get irn number we have generated uh, we have created our own api which we interact with our vendors so when he generate e invoice and brings it back to his erp from there our erp start dialogue with them and then we validate all the parameters before even the goods start from their premises so what it hap what happens that at first time right itself the when the material is coming invoice is verified and then there is no need to have reconciliation so from that basic to uh, having automation on e invoice e way bill so entire process is completely digitized without any manual intervention rpas are common i don't have to tell you be use cases of rpas many people are having that all in reconciliations or uh, airline credit or hotel because these are the very different kind of uh, areas where we need to deal so only rpa is the solution which we can use what we have done is for uh, handling the big queries or handling ad hoc queries we have created a data pool or data analytics and we have trained our own people to handle these queries because today when you get a notice as bishwa has mentioned that the department has got more sophisticated tool they have very focus and detailed information about us more than what we know in the organization and they put the queries and they are, want answer from us very focused question and very uh, uh, detailed answer so the only solution is we cannot always depend on erp and go back to the it system it people so we have to internally generate this report so we have done this exercise and we have created data lake so we answer by writing our own uh, queries and reports and last but not least is now the new buzzword is ai ml so what we have done is that there are number of use cases but in one case where we are uh, at very uh, good stage is summarizing the show cause notices and preparing the draft response so 
this is helping us to manage because every day it doesn't happen that I don't get show calls or I don't have a letter from the department of this 150 registration. So we cannot do it manually. So fetching the notices we have automated, feeding into tool, getting the basic allegations clear and then giving some draft. That is how we are handling this uh, complexity and scale in our organization. So we can uh, discuss many more this. The uh, approach to adopt technology, what we have done is smart approach. So our principle is that whichever tool you adopt, there are many in the market. You can have your own development. It should be simple, scalable. It should be, as I mentioned, machine to machine, maximum, no manual intervention. Then it should be continuously reviewed. And we have to also had training of the people. As I mentioned, that we have trained our own employees to write queries. So these are some thoughts which I thought are relevant for today's uh, theme. I thank uh, organizers for inviting me and giving me opportunity. Thank you very much. Any question? I think I have one minute more to go. OK, I think I have confused you enough, or I have given very clear idea about road path, how you can achieve. Thank you very much. I would uh, like to call Mr. Rajesh on the dais back, please. And uh, to do the honors, Mr. Mukund Kulkarni from KSH International. I would like to call Mr. Mukund to please felicitate Mr. Rajesh.